In this video, I'd like to demonstrate the correct technique of creating the main 2.8 tunnel. We're so involved and engaged in how to do the perfect FACO emulsification that I think sometimes we forget the importance of paying meticulous attention to detail while creating your incisions. In the following video, I'd like to demonstrate the perfect technique of creating the perfect 2.8 clear corneal tunnel and then enabling you to achieve consistently good results in all your cases thereafter. Let's start with understanding the keratomes. Now this is a standard 2.8mm stainless steel angled disposable keratome. As you can see, it has a bevel on either side only on the anterior surface. At its shoulder, that is at the base of the triangle that you can see, the width of this blade is 2.8mm. The tip of the blade is extremely sharp and before we ever make our 2.8 tunnels, it's important that we check for the sharpness and the lack of any distortion of the tip prior to making the main incision. Let's look at the blades more closely. You can see we've taken a measurement of 2.8 millimeters on the caliper and let's compare this with the actual width at the shoulder. As mentioned earlier, you can see the width of the blade at the shoulder is a perfect 2.8 millimeters. So when we create our 2.8 tunnel, when the widest part of the blade enters into the cornea, we are creating an incision which is 2.8 millimeters wide. Having understood now that the width of our tunnel is always going to be fixed, we now try and understand how much into the cornea we need to go prior to piercing the desmates and entering the anterior chamber. Now this defines the length of the incision, that is from the limbus inwards, how much do we go? Let's now understand this concept. If we were to fashion an incision, which was we know 2.8 millimeters wide each and every time, but say 1.7 millimeters in length, this is the extent of entry of the keratome into the cornea before piercing the desk maze to enter the anterior chamber. Now, should you plan for a slightly longer tunnel, which is 2.8 millimeters wide, wire 2 millimeters long, this is the distance you would need to traverse the cornea before piercing the desk maze to be able to achieve a 2 mm long incision. Now here's another variation in keratomes which are easily available to us. This is yet another trapezoid keratome which I will now describe to you. As you can see, the main difference between this keratome and the one I previously described is that the proximal part of the keratome that is proximal to the shoulder differs. Now this part of the keratome is no longer parallel as seen in the previous keratome, however is angled inwards before it reaches the hub. In all other aspects, the part of the keratome tip anterior to the shoulder is exactly the same. That is, it is a bivel tip which has got its bivel only on the anterior surface and it has a sharp tip. Once more, let's just go through the visual of the dimensions of this keratome. The 2.8 width is similar to the previous keratome and this is a comparison of both keratomes visualized simultaneously. And you can see that in almost all aspects, the tips are exactly comparable. The only real difference that I found between both the keratomes is the proximal hub angle. With the anterior keratome, that is the one with the parallel blades beyond the shoulder, the superior keratome, the one with the orange handle, you can see that the proximal hub angle is slightly more acute as opposed to the blue handled keratome. The only difference that that would translate to in actually operating is that you may need to hold the orange keratome slightly anteriorly as opposed to the blue handled keratome to get the exact same incision. We now proceed to understanding what is the correct manner of holding the keratome. 
Please note as you can see in the video above, you need to hold it like a pen. Next we move to understanding what is the correct orientation of the keratome tip at the limbus. That is, what should be the direction in which the tip should face before we make the incision. Now here's a simple way of explaining it to you. Now, if you were to draw a tangent at the point of entry of the keratome tip, you will notice how the keratome tip is at right angles to this tangent. In other words, irrespective of the clock hour at which you plan to take your incision, it's important to always remain absolutely radial. Let's now learn how to make the perfect clear corneal tunnel. I typically make a biplanar incision. I find that a biplanar 2.8 by about 2 mm incision works perfectly well during the nucleus disassembly and the IOL insertion and is a self-sealing incision. And here's how it's made. So first, I hold it at the limbus. I press down and engage into the cornea. I then turn the tip upwards and traverse the cornea about 2 mm. And once I've acquired the adequate length into the cornea, I straighten the keratome and pierce the desmates entering the anterior chamber until the parallel parts of the blade proximal to the shoulder of the blade have entered into the anterior chamber. After which, the keratome is then withdrawn from the eye, avoiding any slicing movements either on the way in or the way out. Now here's a quick recap. Once the blade is in position, depress, engage, elevate to get the correct length in the cornea, straighten, pierce in and out. Let's now see the same movements a couple of times more. It's important at all points that we ensure that there are no hindrances. In this particular case, you can see that the speculum is coming in the way of making the main incision. So it's important at the outset to move the speculum out of the way so as to have no hindrances while creating the clear corneal tunnel. You must always ensure that you have adequate exposure. In this case, you can see how the surgeon turns the eye downwards to bring the limbus more centrally, enabling us to make a perfect tunnel. Having now understood the principles of creating the clear corneal tunnel, let's move to actually watching the surgery. In this case of pseudo-exfoliation, watch the clear corneal tunnel. It's made by me, the left-handed surgeon, at 65 degrees and it is 2.8 millimeters wide and about 2 millimeters long. Let's move to the next case. Now in this case, I'd like you to notice the starting point of the incision. Note how I start my incision anterior to the brown palisades evoked in the clear cornea. Having to press the blade and engaging into the cornea, I then traverse the cornea for about 1.75 millimeters. I now straighten the blade as you can see here and pierce the desmus membrane, enter into the anterior chamber so as the parallel parts of the blade traverse the entire incision. Once completed, watch how I remove the blade without any slicing movements whatsoever. Let's now look at the clear corneal tunnel made by the other keratome. In this particular case, note that the starting point is at the limbus. We now watch the fashioning of the rest of the tunnel. The tunnel as you can see thus created is a 2.8 by about a 2 mm tunnel. With the use of these blades, you are able to create a pretty decent tunnel. But my personal preference is for the orange blades, the ones with the parallel shaft proximal to the shoulder. Let's now see what we mean by bisecting the incision location. This is something I do for my toric IOLs. So if the incision was planned at say 65 as in this case, note how I make my incision bang in the middle of this so as to ensure that half the incision is on the left of the planned clock hour and half of it to the right. This is what I mean by saying bisecting the planned point of the incision. Now how do you end up with a short tunnel? 
Now this happens if your length of your tunnel is too short, that is, you prematurely enter into the anterior chamber as demonstrated in this particular case. So also, a tunnel which is very anteriorly placed, that is, the starting point of the tunnel is way into the cornea, again is not very ideal. Therefore, it's very important for us to pay meticulous attention to detail as to noticing what is the point on the cornea where the incision is initiated. And the final case I'd like to show is one where there is a peripheral corneal opacity. When we do have corneal scars through which we make our incisions, remember that the tissue there is distorted and the kind of feel that we are going to get as we traverse the scar tissue may be very, very different. And therefore, make these tunnels extremely slowly and cautiously while actually paying attention to the feel as the blade goes through that tissue. This brings us to the end of the video tutorial on perfecting the art of mastering the clear corneal tunnel. I do hope most sincerely that some of you found this useful. Thank you.